Mr. Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, many thanks for being part of the show and I hope you're having a great holiday. Time for us to take you through the pages of a national dailies. We call it Off the Press and Open Abon Katari joins the conversation. Open Abon, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, Mercy, Justin, and Nigeria. Good morning. Okay, I can see you people. I can't see people. No, um, okay, no, we're actually working on that and we're hoping that, you know, we resolve all of that in no time. But you seem to be in a holiday mode and we appreciate that. Uh, we'll start off with the leadership newspaper <laughs> this morning. <laughs> On the front page of the leadership, you have 2023 presidency. Asorok stays aloof as aspirants battle for APC ticket. So it just probably might just make nonsense of the uh, permutations and all of the speculations making the rounds that maybe the vice president might be the anointed candidate of President Mohamed Buhari. But that's fine. And on the needs intensifies consultation. Lobbying for presidency, presidential uh, endorsement as a rider. Amechi visits Adamu in Nasarawa. I am not stepping down for anyone, says Umai. Show Nigerians your legacy, Coca tells aspirant. Now, these are uh, the, head, uh, the writers underneath the bold caption uh, talking about the 2023 presidency. Easter, Vice President Yemo Sibajo, Bajabi Amila, others pray for peace. Zulum raises salary of doctors in liberated local government areas. And presidency tackles Wike as more criticism trails pardon for Joshua Darie and Jolly Nyame. Bandits kill policemen. Three others abducts cause in Niger. 11,536 schools closed over insecurity in Nigeria. UNICEF is quoted. Troops killed 10 commanders. 90 terrorists in Lake Chad. These are the headlines on the leadership this morning. All right, uh, moving away from the leadership newspaper, our next part of call is the Punch newspaper. The main story this morning, a presidency is in the news and um, it is saying that PDP opts for indirect, uh, okay, the presidency of 2023 rather, PDP opts for indirect primaries may prune 17 aspirants uh, with some Riders there, consensus not about imposing candidate but reducing number of aspirants. Sir uh, key spokesman is quoted on that one. Neck uh, will soon meet on venue of May 29 primaries. Other issues, says PDP spokesperson. Take convention to the moon. Candidate that will win presidency will emerge. Atiku's associate is saying uh, other stories are making um, front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, you faulted Alamis years and pardon uh, silent on Dari Nigerian to tackle Kiyamo. All right, also Nachi's husband uh, took her cars, left her stranded. Uh, that's um, the mother of um, the deceased. More the factions looming APC as PDP was Yari uh, Marafa. More stories, Nigeria imports 109 billion uh, anti Naira anti-malarial drugs in six months, local pharmaceuticals uh, struggle. Uh, let's see if we can take more. Presidency mum as Kuka knocks Buhari over insecurity, corruption. Easter, Oshiba Jogba, Jabia Mila, clerics, others preach hope. 15% imported vehicle levy illegal against Finance Act, uh, ex-NAC um, panel member. Increasing fuel subsidy puts a Nigerian economy at high risk, the World Bank uh, is saying. 25% of 2022 capital expenditure may not be funded. That's according to economists. That those are the major stories you can find on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Away from the Punch, we take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. And it says, Coker to Buhari, Nigerians no longer recognize their country. And as boldly written on the bold, I mean, on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune, uh, you have several writers underneath the bold caption. Northern Bishop backs Northern elders and call for Buhari's resignation. But it's okay to make all of this 
uh, calls, uh, that's entirely on the National Assembly. And do you think that you know, the National Assembly will go ahead with this? If they should, why haven't they done that? Um, Nigeria's peace, prosperity will be restored soon. The Vice President is reassuring Nigerians, uh, Yemi Osibajo. And you have Bajabi Amila, Governor's orders call for prayers at Easter. Interesting. Why Yahya Bello's presidency will benefit the masses? Uh, this might just be very um, political campaign. Exam for a governor, Yari Mafara, dump APC for the PDP. NDLEA intercepts cocaine hidden in footwear and toothpaste at airports. It's getting uh, very interesting. And Falana takes over prosecution of Ade Doi, others over the alleged murder of the OAU student. Surging food price or food and gas prices push Nigeria's inflation rate to 15.92%. We're talking about double digits for seven consecutive years, and it calls for a lot of concern uh, for us as a people. And you also find the MNJTF eliminates 100 terrorists in Lake Chad. These are the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. And finally, we will review the Nation newspaper. Well, the banner caption for this morning, security architecture on the reformation, says uh, presidency, equities rate 10 rises to 2.53 trillion naira. Fund managers invest 8 trillion naira pension cash. Uh, 2023, uh, Bill ready for open contest, says campaign DG, if a student murder, or should all case Falano as prosecutor, at Easter of war, Pope seeks peace, uh, governors, let's remain united. Uh, Tinubu, let us build Nigeria as never before. There's a picture uh, there, the Pope uh, giving a blessing to the child on Easter Sunday. Uh, more stories, uh, Yari Marafa, head for PDP, Four held in Kaduna, Floyd kidnap bid. All right, uh, and finally, uh, aspirants step up governorship ticket uh, chase. Lagos PDP, Dosumu, Dohati, three others in race. Benwe, PDP, deputy governor to battle speaker. Akman Odoyede seeks uh, Aquaibam APC ticket. Abbey joins Rivers race. Nimasa DG begins consultation in Kaduna. Those are the stories you can find on the Nation newspaper, the front page, that is. All right, let's have Okpunabo and Katari join the conversation this morning. Okpunabo, it's good to have you join us. Yes, thank you, and good morning. Let's see Justin once more. Yeah, thank you. Yet again. We start off with the Nigerian Tribune, and it talks about the fact that uh, Coker has said to the president that Nigerians no longer recognize their country. It talks about the security issues that we're faced with as a people. And there are several. So you have the fact that Northern bishops backed the uh, Northern elders on the call for the resignation of the president. I mean, how many more days to the president leaving the office? The call is becoming very loud and very loud. But, but what are your thoughts? Well, uh, that um, the country is in bad straits. I mean, that uh, the tenure ministers have never been distressing in the history of this country, not even during the Civil War. It's not in doubt. It can, it, it, that's one fact that you cannot confess. Nevertheless, I think the call for the resignation of the president uh, is just to underscore the fact that Nigeria is heading slowly but steadily for a rendezvous with anarchy and that the president has failed to ensure coercion, peace, unity, and most importantly, to protect lives and property, which he voted to do on the May 29, 2015 and May 29, 2019. So that is just to underscore that fact, to emphasize that fact that the president has failed. I don't think that they sincerely believe that uh, the Buhari will know 
will ever contemplate resigning. Yes, no doubt we've been hurry to get out of office, no doubt, because uh, the issues have overwhelmed him. We never expected to be confronted with these issues. So he's in a hurry to get out of office, no doubt. But that he's going to resign, everybody knows that. Even if Buhari wants to resign, they can bounce around him, especially now that the political leadership is greater, and uh, most of them depend on him to succeed him. They will not even let him resign. So the issue of uh, resignation is completely out of out of the way. So but it's basically to emphasize, to emphasize the fact that Buhari has failed and peace man. That, 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 that. I don't think the sincerity is that the president is going to resign. Which I uh, am. <laughs> okay, so, so, I mean, just quickly, uh, the issue of resignation that you have mentioned is uh, out of the space for the president. He cannot. But what about no, the other that, option that, that of would, that, would be, that would be passing on the sticky weekend. I mean, it, it should, it's a pretty illusion to think of that. So, so how about the issue of impeaching the president? Uh, on the other the president has, the president has always been has always been in peace, not always once or twice. Uh, I'm sorry, let me let me let me just use this opportunity to elucidate. I find to make a mistake when we talk about impeachment. Impeachment is not removal. Impeachment is just an indictment process that leads to removal. But most times we say impeachment as in removal. No, impeachment is official indictment. So I believe what you're talking about is removal. If impeached by the National Assembly and then removed. On few occasions of the year, but the National Assembly of today and the rubber stamp assembly will not have the gumption to muster the required constitutional number to remove the president from office. That, again, will be another grand illusion. The national, especially now that you have the APC in majority in the National Assembly, and they see this, the president as a father, that even when he goes wrong, he can just be talked to or appealed to, to have a change in attitude or action and not to be even publicly as created. If you look at this National Assembly, that is the kind of National Assembly you have. It is not like the Syracuse National Assembly. It is not like the Ocadibos National Assembly and the National Assembly in the past. This is just one rubber stamp National Assembly. And it will not have that nerve, that gumption, that bear to remove Mr. President from... It will not even commence the process of impeachment. It will not even commence it. So that, again, is taking it too far. It, it is, it is addressing the, uh, the the National Assembly board rules. It will not, not that it doesn't have the constitutional power, but it doesn't have the gumption to so do. All right, uh, let's stay with the uh, um, Nigerian Tribune, um, other stories are making headlines. Just above them, um, the masthead. Uh, Messi and I, we were uh, chatting about it now, doing um, top trending. It, it's, it's like uh, there is uh, no end in sight with the war uh, without... Um, so uh, they caption it that is the Tribune, war without end between Tinubu or Shibajo supporters, and that there are talks of um, um, the vice president um, being a Judas. What are your thoughts this morning, Opunabo? Well, on this program or on the sister station, when they, I try to analyze uh, when they refer to the vice president as Judas and Peter, and I just laugh. I said, first and foremost, a lot of people have this erroneous impression that Tinubu was instrumental to the emergence of the vice president, of Simandar's vice president. That is quite wrong. He was actually a mastery. He was more or less foisted. The credit should go to Akande and uh, Ralph and Ralph and Ralph and Co. That is one major fact. Now, having said that, the vice president, it is his constitutional right to also buy. Is it because he was uh, Tinubu's commissioner, I thought he was commissioner for justice? So, therefore, he should be stripped of every other right not to contest? That is unfair. It is the wish of a father to allow the son, the, the wish of a father to allow the son to be greater than it. So why would you even be that selfish? Why would they go center? Whichever way you said is the Judas. Thank God we are just talking of a uh, uh, resurrection of Christ. Therefore, the betrayal of Judas, they won't have the salvation. We won't have been celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Are people talk of that? <laughs> That's another way Christ to Christ has to be betrayed. Christ has to be betrayed for us to be saved. 
So if Tinubu has to be betrayed, because it's part of Nigeria's problem, so if he has to be betrayed for Nigeria to be saved, why is the one who committed condemning the man? We criticize Peter for denying Jesus. Yes. But don't forget, that same Peter we criticize is the rock, is the foundation of the church. Yes, we criticize Peter for denying Jesus. If these things are not taking place, you remember when Christ himself said, Lord, if it's possible for this cup, let it pass away. If not, I shall drink of it. Christ at a point was no longer willing. You see, let us not let us not be fanatical about these things. Gone are those days when the the uh clergymen deceived their great grandfathers because they could not read. These things are there the Bible. Who to even stop telling me about uh, uh, spiritual interpretation? No sir. The truth about it is that Christ at a point was not willing. Even on the cross, said, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Christ came in two forms, human form and spirit. And he had no choice because he wanted the cup to pass. But because it was destined in heaven, he had to drink. And so he had no choice. And if these things are not taking place, who have been talking of salvation in Christendom? What are the talking of salvation? These things have to take place. So let us not just condemn these people. But, but let us not look, 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 look them the area. And not, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, finally, please, on this very issue. Okay. These things were these things we are meant to happen. You remember even Judas returned the money and hung uh, uh, hanged, hanged himself. He committed suicide. These things we are meant to happen. If they are not, they are destined in heaven to happen. So no have control over it. Christ himself prophesied it. So they are meant to happen, not have control. So in that same breath, El Shibanyo has no control over what he's doing. It was destined to happen. So why are you blaming him? No, but um, let, let's delve into some of the things that you have mentioned. As much as we're going to move away quickly from all of that, but you also yeah. need to understand yeah. it. It was not categorically stated that Judas himself would be the one that would betray Jesus. And so um, th th there was no name. But yeah, we knew yeah, that yes, yes. He, Judas there, was not the one to betray Jesus. There was but no, you know, there was no knowing, specific. Uh, but, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipresent, but all-knowing God. So he knew who was to betray him. And don't forget, he turned and looked at Judas. If you remember, he turned and looked at Judas. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. Uh, up. So he knew. So he knew. And so let us, let us not be fanatical about all those things. Like when they go, fight, 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 fight. If they don't pay your tax, you're not going to have they don't pay your tax. All right. Let's, let us move on. Uh, now. Open up our Kutaria. Eat and drink with your friends. That is another form of paying tax. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> we need to move on, away so. from this, right? Uh, you also yeah. have the issue of the presidency <laughs> on the leadership newspaper. 2023 presidency. Asso Rock stays aloof as aspirant battle for the APC ticket. It, it means that, you know, the president or the presidency, no one is actually um, concerned. You, you need to see the caliber of persons that have declared their intentions or have indicated interest to becoming the president. Of course, he has to be on the, uh, you know, seeking the presidential ticket at the time at the party level. And so the presidency is just not really involved in all of that. So how do you see all of this pan out with all of the, the persons that have showed interest? In Are you, who told you this? Ordinarily, one would have just acquired in this uh, guesstimation by calling it a guest. The conjecture, we don't know what it's about. From uh, the president's interview, if you can remember, he said he was asked by channels, and he said he has the person is close to his heart. If he discloses the identity, the person will be killed. So that that obviates the need for any further proof that the president is interested. Definitely, the president will be interested in this option. Definitely. I mean, it will be full-handed to think that the president will not be interested in who's subsisting. That is going to be interested in who's subsisting. And that's why everybody wants the presidential nod on, 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 on the platform of APC. They want the presidential nod. Because whether we like it or not, we already have some level of full -hand. And so the president I know. I said the president I know. The body language of Mr. President to a very large extent also affects the voting pattern. I try to those is official, those those that are loyal. So there is no way the president will isolate himself, will remain aloof. It is not possible. He will want somebody that will succeed, whether for positive or negative reasons. 
positive reading as in, oh, I believe I have done well. I want somebody that will continue from where I've done. Or negative reading of somebody that will come and add all my ineptitude, my malpractice. So whatever positive or negative reading Mr. President will be interested in his success. So nobody should come and tell Nigerians that Mr. President is aloof. That is a clear case of Mendocino points. He cannot be aloof. He has also alluded to that fact when he said the person is close to his heart. But he was not he was not going to disclose that identity because that would be jeopardizing the life of that person. So, so how else are you going to open up all that that uh, who, who do you think that the president might be interested in? <laughs> I mean I, I'm just trying to put you on that spot. Sorry, sorry? So who do you think the president might be interested in if you say that? That the president cannot not be interested in who succeeds him. And so the question now would be, who do you think the president is interested in in succeeding him? I believe the president is interested in the man whose identity he has refused to disclose in order not to jeopardize his life. So, so what that, a way that, that's of that, that's 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 political this morning. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let us uh, move on. The interesting stories on the front page of, of the punch. Uh, let's see which one we can take. A uh, presidency PDP opts for indirect primaries may prune um, seventeen aspirant. Also interesting is the fact that um, uh, uh, their reactions are uh, trailing the pardon that was given to Dari and other Nigerians. Uh, uh, the punch caption said this way: "You forwarded Al Alamiesia's pardon silent on Dari Nigerians tackle." Kiyamo, how do you react to that particular one, Oponabo? Which part of that? There are three questions now. Let us the talk about the uh, presidential pardon. Yes, let us, start, let us start with the, the pardon that happened not too long ago, uh, given to Dari. Okay, Darien. the pardon. Yes. <laughs> well, well, you know, we're approaching the crunch time mm -hmm. politics. It's all about politics, you know. And um, APC is going to pardon Dari. Yes, APC is going to pardon Dari. APC deals, uh, Yami, APC is going to pardon that, APC is going to pardon Yami. So there is this possibility that these persons are going to be loyal to the party. That is my own thinking. Maybe I might be wrong, I might be wrong. Because I cannot decipher the rationale behind that pardon. They are one and start four years, they don't have start six years of to start it. Even the sentence, the sentence to me, it was too mild for the offense committed. A man steals one goat, is sentenced to five years in prison. A man steals 30 billion, is sentenced to two and a half years. And after one year, you can't handle What message are you sending to others? You know, the general belief right now is, okay, I'm going to steal 100 billion. When I steal 100 billion, I am going to save 20 billion for judiciary. I'm going to save... 10 billion lawyers, SAN, then another 2 to 3 billion for this, then I still have at least 60 billion. That's okay. If I go in for four years and come out and I have 60 billion, it's all right. That is how people think these days. That's the truth. That is the truth. But if you go in five, 10 years, 15 years, you come out and you're stripped of everything, every foot of crime. You got. I tell it myself as a deterrent to a lot of They will come out, they see end all the all the stories, definitely the proofs of crime, definitely they'll release to them. After a while, they grant another pardon, they release. Four years. But the man who stole just goats and cows has been languishing there. I was in trial first for sixteen years. I was in trial. Then the case will go on for another uh, uh, four, five years. Then he'll be jailed for 10 years because he's a poor man. Because he's a poor man. You see, the rule, I, mean, I tell you that we live in a country where the tempest of justice blows faithfully. The rule of law is paid and the rule of justice runs in some back. Runs in some back. And then why will such persons come out? Why? After how many years? You stole how many billion? Then you spent three, four years in prison. After, and you know why these persons that are in prison, I can bet you. They are not like the other prisoners. No, they are not. Though. They receive phone calls, they receive visitors, and they might, they might even take them to their houses to sleep. We will explain all that. Or keep them in a place, air conditioned place. They might even sleep in the controller's office. Or get out. And the money they bring them out to show the world that they are prisoners. 
That is not going on in this country. But so how do you expect us to have a change? For but, the but but what do you really? Don't know if you are Open about Qataria. Would you yes. really blame that, you know, on the president? Because if you look at it, it's a constitutional concern. Section 175 of the Constitution talks about the prerogative um, or pattern of presidential pattern. If I would blame, he has the right, if I would blame it on you know, the to. Isn't it messy? No, no it? But, I, but I'm saying, how do you. I mean, it's not. He has the right. I mean, he has the. He's been given the right to choose. And it's within yeah, his just, jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. To, you have to choose. Any you have just answered. You asked the question and you answered. So which means no, no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying that should you, you blame, you should you answer? blame the president? No, the I, question I, I, opened up about the Qataria. You asked the question. Let me answer. Now, if we should blame the first, people said it's council of state, not the president. First, they say, oh, you can't blame the president. But we all know the body language. Number two, it is a right that you should exercise with a lot of wisdom your discretion. For example, it is the right of a judge to advocate on an issue and give between, as prescribed by the law, when you have between five and seven years in prison. Now, it is the right of the judge to choose between the five years and seven years. Now, the gravity of the offense will determine whether it's going to be five years or it's going to take the maximum of seven years. But that right must be exercised intelligently. That's the point we are making. Well, how do you, you know define intelligence? intelligence? We are not saying that we acted ultra virus. No, don't nobody say you acted ultra virus. But we are saying you acted on sentimental ground. Because you cannot that define, injurious, you cannot that define. To the health of our nation. That's the point we are making. Okunabon Kataria. Yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, as much yes. as you're saying that, the point is you can't even define if the, the Constitution gave the president the powers. How do you now define what is morally, morally right and at the point where the president should act rational? Because it's within his okay, discretion. Very good. Very good. And so, no, will, and so for the president say, now, I, I mean, freeing um, I or will. having to grant pardon to these governors, that of terrible state. You, I mean, the president is acting after within that. his own you discretion. Are now, so you have asked. Let me answer now. Hmm? Can I answer? Merci. Go ahead. Right. Thank you. Now, when you talk of right, presidential pardon is the, is the president of Mr. President. Nobody is disputing that fact. But how it is being exercised is what is an issue. I'll give you an example now. It is said, for example, you have in civilized lives, you have people on parole, prisoners who are released on parole. Certain indices are taken into consideration. The, attitude, the, the gravity of the offense. The attitude of the prisoner, how he conducted himself while in jail, and so many other indices. That is what you take into consideration. In this particular case, we are talking of fraud. We are not talking of murder. Where you say the man has abjured his sins and penitently approached the, the, the authority. He has now he is now remorse. We are talking of fraud, where a man stole X amount of money. No problem. It is your right. But when you grant him this pardon, and don't forget, once he's granted pardon, he is completely forced of all his sins and has the same right as you do. Now you grant him pardon. He comes out, goes back, whatever, whether he's that genuinely uh, repentant or not, that is no business. I will tell. Tomorrow, what will the next day sitting governor do? He will steal, I don't give you an answer. He will now steal one, one trillion. We now know in this country how these pardons are granted. Influence the system. He's already stealing. What he actually wanted to steal was 500 billion. But he makes it a trillion. Why is he making it one trillion? He knows he's going to spend 500 billion to ensure after two, three years he gets that pardon. We are the, 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 the deterrent there. Why not allow them to stop their tenants? Why not? What's, what's, what's so special about the pandemic? 
The same person who condemned the presidential pardon granted Alan Messi. And we all know the Alan Messi has circumstance. That he was not a victim of President Lucian Paul Passenger, who they said in court. That was Alan Messi's problem. We all know that. But now, what is the rush in granting this man pardon? What? What do you, and what, what do you stand to benefit? What are, the, what are the advantages of granting them pardon? Some have just one or two more years to go. Why not allow them to spend all their time in prison? As, 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 as uh, this are by the court. What is the rush? Why grant them pardon? And why at this time? That's why it's an issue. Why at this time? Because that was the problem. That's why it's a discretion. Why not leave them? All right, uh, uh, open the ball. Open the ball. Nobody is saying what he did. Excuse me, nobody is saying what he did is ultra violent. All right. It is within his right. It is within his right to so do. But we are looking at the reasonableness. In that action, right? it, it's they because it has a discretion. I mean, when you are given a discretion, open a bank, I understand the point that you're yes. putting out. But when you're given a discretion, a discretion that does not have any, um, you, you don't have clauses around it. There are no uh, do's and don'ts, and what you're expected not yes. to do. It's a discretion, and so it's so, totally under so, constitution. So you can't blame him. Yeah, That's his no discretion. Because it is believed that the man that will exercise the discretion will be do so. Intelligently, that's it, why. But that might just that's be his thing, intelligence. Just let it go for Open now, about okay? Kataria, that might just be the president's intelligence, and that's why a discretion is a discretion. It's just there. It's very ambiguous, okay. and you can't explain okay. it. Okay. All right, okay. Open Abou, thank I you so much. We'll just leave it at that. Well, All right. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Oponabo. Uh, what's well, a very big thank you for all of your thoughts. Uh, but uh, before we go, I th um, understand we still have some time, right? All right, so uh, let's just take uh, one more. Uh, uh, still... is always in the hurry to send me away. Okay, I'm not <laughs> sending you away. Okay, let's, no, at the point we're just, I'll, I'll only it. we're no, dwelling no, 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 so much okay. on that issue when okay. we have other issues to discuss. Uh, let's uh, take other stories now. Uh, the president, uh, like I said before, let's talk on uh, this PDP opt-in for indirect primaries. Uh, May prune uh, 17 um, aspirant. Is that a good development right now? Indirect primaries are for the uh, PDP presidential polls. Well, it is, it is, it is the party's discretion. Mm -hmm. The electoral act and files, you have three modes, direct, indirect, and consensus. Uh, it is the party, the best thing the party, any party will do right now is to adopt uh, the modus operandi that will ensure victory at the, at the general election. So probably they will sit down together and agree. When they say direct primary, we all know what the direct primary is. We all know the benefits of direct primary, which to me is even the best. The option A for is even the best. We all know what the, the benefits of direct primary. But the same direct primary, definitely one or two persons who want to influence the process, no doubt about that, will definitely want to influence the process. That's why I do with the financial watches. We want to influence, and if you have that financial watches with the numerical strength, in terms of delegates now, we are not talking about the masses, in terms of delegates now, well, fine. That, that, that's what is going on. And some want to sell their conscience. You know, in the daytime, they are with you. At night, they are doing something else. So they come in the morning, collect money from you. At night, they go cast their vote for somebody else. You know, a lot, lots of intrigues. And that's why a lot of people up. So that uh, none can be caught in the process or be accused of uh, uh, being a Judas. Since it's, it's, it's the resurrected night in the political palace, being a Judas. None can be accused of being a Judas. So when it's indirect, how do you know? When it is direct, you will know. If it's consensus, well, consensus, as the name implies, we all agree to produce a candidate. But we all know uh, the problems associated with consensus candidates. So a lot of them will offer for indirect, which is the safest landing point, especially if you want to read. It's the safest landing point. So a lot of them will offer for indirect. But in the fact is, exclusive preserve, if they so decide, it's not going to be decided by one point. Not even the national chairman can so decide. Uh, the NEC will decide. The party will decide. And then they all agree, fine. Then they are they, bring out their best. Because the target is producing a candidate that they believe will navigate the party to success in the 2023 general election. All right, Okuna Bon Katare, uh, many thanks for being part of the show this morning. We appreciate your time always. Thank you. Uh, do have yourself uh, a wonderful holiday. He is, is a public affairs analyst and of always on Mondays, it's a delight to have him join the conversation.
But um, we take a breakdown and let's let you know what happened today in history. When we return, we'll be looking at the first major conversation right here on the show. Please stay with us. Thank you. 